many random numbers can you remember at any given time? 5? 10? 20? Turns out the telephone company wanted to know. It's hard to believe, but there was once a time that Ma Bell was the most powerful purveyor of information technology and primary research in the world. AT&T's Bell Labs employed thousands of scientists, in exchange for their monopoly status as the US's sole telephone carrier. In 1956, AT&T psychologist George Miller, published a paper entitled, The Magical Number 7, Plus or Minus 2. He had been tasked to empirically find out how many random digits a person could remember at any one time, so Bell could decide how many to use for telephone numbers. It turned out most people can only remember five to nine things at any given time without resorting to memory tricks, such as chunking. Chunking is the process of grouping a number of items into a single entity, so it becomes only one of the items, such as an area code, and therefore increases our capacity. This is known as working memory, and its contents are typically lost within 20 seconds. Other psychologists extended Miller's work into instruction. John Sweller's cognitive load theory, suggested that memory is made up of two parts, short-term and long-term. The goal of instruction is to store information into long-term memory, but it must pass through short-term first. Since that memory is limited, instructors should focus on the most important, or germane parts, and minimize the more extraneous ones. Richard Mayer expanded on Sweller's ideas, and thought we had two distinct pathways for receiving information. The auditory path takes information from the ears, while the visual takes it from the eyes. Each has unique, but finite qualities, effectively increasing our total working memory. Since there are two independent storage areas, it is important to present information appropriate to each one, in order to maximize both. This distinction starts to get fuzzy, when reading is involved. Words are initially processed by the eyes, but the internal machinery of the auditory path is used to actually make sense of those words. The Bell system settled on seven numbers, a three-digit prefix, called the exchange, and four random digits, keeping the net cognitive load to five items. Our goal as instructors and communicators is to make our messages as understandable as possible. If people can only keep a limited amount of information at any given time, and you want them to follow what you're saying, you have to actively manage which of those seven items should be top of mind. Plus or minus two.